All right, we are still awaiting that appeals court ruling on the president's immigration order. So is uh, this next gentleman, Admiral William Fallon, of course, the former Central Command commander during the Iraq War. Uh, what this man has done during his career, stunning. It's, Admiral, it's an honor to have you. Thank you for taking the time. Hey, nice to be back, Neil. So let me ask you a little bit about this. The president is saying these are life and death issues. He's convinced he's right on these issues. But he has also criticized judges at, who would who would criticize where he stands on, on these issues. Do you think that kind of stuff and that kind of talk, however passionate he feels, actually boomerangs on him? So uh, you're talking about immigration, uh, yeah. the immigration yes. ban? You know, that's one that's really, uh, uh, I have two, two strong feelings here. First of all, this country is a nation of immigrants. That's where, uh, where we came from, and, uh, and I think it's a tremendous strength of the country. So. The idea that we ban people, but again, uh, I think this thing has been uh, uh, taken in a lot of different ways, uh, particularly in uh, the hype. So uh, the other part of me is the feeling that uh, we certainly want to be uh, very mindful of who's coming into the country, and we don't want to do things that would jeopardize security here. Uh, that being said, it seems to me that most of the, uh, if not all, the terrorist incidents so far here have been from people that have actually been in the country for some time. And so you have to wonder. But the other reality is that uh, uh, you, you want to have good border procedures. You want to have a strong, uh, strong security. Uh, as best you can, you want to screen people. You want to continue to be welcoming, uh, uh, have open doors to people that, that are going to make this help to make this country better. Uh, and I think the, the way this has played out, it's uh, not been particularly helpful in, uh, in lot, many places of the world. It seems to me that. Uh, a lot of this is uh, making good on uh, campaign promises and statements. I understand that. But I am uh, very interested in uh, longer term policies with this country and, and how we're going to get moving on some of the things that I think are, are really important for the long term, such as our relationship with China. You know, so, I, uh, so many things to do. Uh, I hear and, uh, you. Uh, uh, I, I, on that China thing, you know, because you mentioned something, I did want to get in with you on it. And, and as long as I've interviewed, it's been a while since the last interview, but. but mm -hmm. uh, Donald Trump over the years, China has always been his number one worry. He never seemed as worried about Russia. Now, obviously, we can all agree to disagree, but uh, down to whether they rigged their currency, rigged their trade numbers, rigged everything. Uh, but then he took a harder right turn when he was learning of, of, of China militarizing these islands in the South China Sea and elsewhere, and now militarizing uh, not too far off the coast of Japan, and he was concerned about it. So the point that China was and is, and I suspect will be, his number one worry. Is he right to prioritize well, that way? Yeah, I, I worry may not be the, uh, uh, the target word, but uh, certainly interest, and I think it, it ought to be in terms of international relations because it's, it's a, a huge country, uh, the largest uh, population in the world. They have an incredible uh, economic linkage to us and the rest of the world. They're, uh, they're an expanding uh, power. They're uh, coming back. In their words, they're uh, re resuming their more traditional uh, uh, place of power and influence in, uh, in Asia in particular. But it's usually important to us for the future. Uh, there's a tremendous potential if we could figure out a way to work together on things. Well, how could uh, we then, Admiral? How, how do you yeah. think we could? One has said it would be the reverse of what Richard Nixon did, using China as a wedge with Russia. This time we would use... Russia as a wedge with China. What do you make of that? Well, I, I, I think they're, uh, they're different, uh, certainly different countries, and they're at very different stages of development and effect on us. Uh, China, I see, is much, much uh, bigger, more important from the standpoint of the potential for now and in the future. Uh, Russia, uh, Putin's Russia has uh, visions of returning to the grand old days of empire. Uh, they've got a heck of a long way to go, uh, but what they do have is a very coherent strategy, for, it seems to me, that they've been executing in their so-called near abroad to regain influence and to uh, push us away. So uh, they gagged on NATO coming close to them, and they want to push back on that. Uh, he's seen opportunities to get involved in places that are traditionally, you know, Syria, for example, was, uh, was their niche, if you would, in the Middle East for many, many years. And so they saw an opportunity to, to get back in there and, uh, and stick their uh, thumbs in our eyes at the same time. And so he's taken advantage of things, I think primarily because he's got an agenda uh, that he's, uh, he's working. Uh, flip that around to China, and 
Uh, Chinese, uh, uh, much bigger, uh, much more important longer term. Uh, yes, they don't particularly care for our influence in Asia uh, because they uh, view themselves as the, as the big power there. Uh, but they also recognize that there are tremendous uh, linkages between the two countries. So I, I see them as very different uh, in, in many respects. So I, I wouldn't, uh, I just wouldn't put them, elevate them to the same level at all in a discussion. All right, well, I think China is much more important. All right, got you, sir. Uh, Edward William Fallon, uh, former Central Command Commander during the Iraq War. Very good catching up with you.